So, look, clearly this is a big issue. People have been talking about this for a number of years. People are talking about it today. They will be talking about it tonight and, and for the days, the weeks, and the months to come. We have two guests here with us right now. Pamela McCall, you are a director with Smart Approaches to Marijuana Canada. That's right. Uh, David Mama Levine, you're an author. You also own a dispensary yes. here in the city. Now, I, I suppose the starting point for all of this is that what marijuana dispensaries do is illegal right now under the current legal framework. But the city's position is that, look, they still fulfill some important service here in the city. And so rather than turn a blind eye, rather than shut them all down, let's do what we can, do what is within our power, and let's try to regulate this. Pamela, let me start with you. Sure. Is that a reasonable position? It's uh -huh. not a reasonable position to violate federal law. Um, we think that the uh, city and council, if they move ahead, will be in violation of the BC Charter and the Vancouver Charter. We think they actually may already be in violation of the Vancouver Charter. They've given out 14 licenses already. Now, if they haven't revoked those, um, the media reported that to them, that 14 had been discovered. If they haven't revoked those, then the Attorney General of British Columbia should come in and take over the government of the city. How, how do you justify breaking the law, as it were? Well, I don't think we're hurting anybody and we're helping many people. So I think history shows that civil disobedience is the only way to end persecution and scapegoating for a lot of minorities. And the way to do that is to peacefully and with dignity resist these unjust laws. And that's what the dispensaries are. I guess the city is prepared to take the next step and acknowledge that we have a right to exist and that we should follow some rules. And I agree, we should follow some rules, but they have to be based on preventing harm to others. Which is where I would come in and say that they're one of the primary things that I have against the dispensaries is they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be um, uh, tested by anybody. The Health Canada and the Vancouver Coastal Health have said they cannot test them, they're, they're illegal entities. For any public official to actually allow this to go through, without anybody testing this product, puts this city and all the taxpayers at risk of liability. If one tourist walks in there and gets E. coli, this is going to make news. And David, I want to get your take. I mean, how do you answer that criticism, not of, not of the goal of, of the dispensaries, but of the process, right? The criticism being no one really knows how above board well, what yeah. happens in those dispensaries. I agree with Pam completely. I think there should be mandatory testing for metals, microbes, and other contaminants. But the city of Vancouver doesn't have that capacity. How well, can they possibly move into federal government jurisdiction like this well, when they don't have the capacity to do that? Why, why not just uh, have a lab that says you take your uh, cannabis there to be tested and have it mandatory to, to get a license? And who's going to watch over that and regulate that if it's not the federal government? Well, uh, we can have a industry uh, within the industry entity do that, like the bank. That is not good interest of the public to have the industry regulate their own testing. That's ridiculous. Pamela, I want to ask you a question. I mean, some of, some of what the argument is, is that yep. in the absence of federal regulation, of federal law, which is something that, that you're, you're pointing out quite clearly, that, look, this stuff doesn't exist, what is happening here is illegal. In the absence of, of any kind of change to that, do you recognize any any service or purpose that the dispensaries are fulfilling right now no, that I, Health Canada doesn't no I fulfill. think that they pose a threat to public health and safety there we know there's organized crime not necessarily this gentleman's but there are organized crime members in the dispensaries and what happened in Colorado and in Washington State and in California was there was so much masquerading through these dispensaries of the crime that they shut them down 77 percent of the dispensaries in Colorado have been shut down if the city does go ahead yes. with regulation. Is there any aspect of what's being proposed that you can get on side with? Absolutely not. Unlike yourself, um, I think that I live in a civilized society. If you want to change the laws of this country, you work within the parameters of, of um, advocacy and lobbying. You work within the law. Um, I think that all law comes with, and civilized behavior comes with, responsibilities and rights. These people, I believe, speak of rights. They forget about the responsibility. You're not selling to kids, but somebody's buying it from you, a, and they are selling to kids. Listen, if a doctor and a parent agreed that cannabis was the best medicine for a teen, I'd sell to them. Furthermore... Against the law. Well, I've been no breaking, evidence. I've been, no, there's a lot of evidence. That's there's where you're no wrong. Evidence. Can you tell me a, a marijuana victim that used cannabis properly and it still hurt them? You Name can, one. 
Just there one. are many, I mean, many, many children in psychiatric three. wards right now who will never recover full cognitive damage. Because never. of cannabis. So you're saying yes. that three million Canadians smoke pot, more or less, so we should be seeing uh, mental health problems uh, increase, you should see, highest, an increase you, in psychosis. We have the highest use of, youth, of, of marijuana by youth in the Western world, and we have extremely high rates of schizophrenia. So you they've gone up. Schizophrenia has gone up since the 50s but, when no one was smoking pot. Is that what you're saying? I just, need to hear, I just need to hear your answer on this. So you're saying schizophrenia rates have risen since 1950 in Canada since people started smoking pot at a greater rate. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying we have high rates of use of schizophrenia. Well, you'd have to show it in the general me, population. Let me jump in here because I, I do want to bring things back just, just as we wrap up here sure. to the regulation, right? Okay. Because that is what is being discussed. Right. I already asked you what, if anything, on the table there is palatable to you, and, right. I, and I think you quite clearly said none of it. <laughs> none of it. Uh, David, what in these regulations that, that you see you know, being proposed right now are you on side with? Is it everything, every aspect of it? Well, they're having hearings, so I guess it hasn't been finalized yet. And I would be in favor of any regulation that prevents harm to others. But aside from uh, keeping it non-corporate, having uh, child-proof packaging, um, doing food safe on edibles, maybe crash posts to prevent people from smash and grab, uh, most of the uh, regulations proposed are just to foist stigma, to uh, inflict parental hysteria upon our community with no evidence of cannabis harming teens. They can't we have provide, mountains, they can't provide any names of anybody who's been hurt. Of evidence. So <laughs> I, we gave you the first I, word. I, David will give you the I last just word. Think, I just think <laughs> that the regulations, it makes sense because of the uh, impairment levels of novice users to maybe have a parental permission policy in there. But other than that, I don't think our licensing costs or any of our advertising prevention or anything else should be different than that of Starbucks. Okay, Pamela McCall, David Malone-Levine, <laughs> thank you for making the time. That was great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.